Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good afternoon to you. Welcome to our celebration of this of this Eucharist on this Saturday at the Epiphany, as we continue our journey towards the baptism of the Lord, which we celebrate over this weekend, and then we return to ordinary time. On Monday. As we celebrate this Mass, I want to pray for each of us here in the church and all those who are either viewing or listening to this broadcast via Good News Radio 99.5, Channel 30 floor here in Grenada, or on the Dasson Facebook page. And let us pray especially for those who are in ministry called to serve the Lord as priests, religious, as deacons, whatever. Uh, they're called to, to do within um, the church in service of God. We turn to God once again, acknowledging our need for his mercy and his forgiveness. And so let us ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us of all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. We are quite confident that if we ask the Son of God for anything, and it is in accordance with his will, he will hear us. And knowing that whatever we may ask, he hears us. He knows that we have already been granted what we ask of him. If anybody sees his brother commit a sin that is not a deadly sin, he has only to pray, and God will give life to the sinner, not those who commit a deadly sin, for there is a sin that is dead. And I will not say that you must pray about that. Every kind of wrongdoing is sin, but not all sin is deadly. We know that anyone who has been begotten by God does not sin, because the begotten Son of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we belong to God, but the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. We know too that the Son of God has come and has given us the power to know the true God. We are in the true God as we are in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. This is eternal life. Children, be on your guard against false God. The word of the Lord. Response, the Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. <laughs> Sing a new song to the Lord. His praise is in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let Zion's sons exalt in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbers and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. The Lord, Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful rejoice in, the, in their glory. Shout for joy and take the rest. Let the people of God be on their lips. This honor is for all his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A great prophet has appeared among us. God has visited his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. 
Jesus went with his disciples into the Judean countryside and stayed with them there and baptized. At the same time, John was baptizing at Anan near Salim, where there was plenty of water and people were going there to be baptized. This was before John had been put in prison. Now some of John's disciples had opened a discussion with a Jew about purification. And so they went to John and said, Rabbi, the man who was with you on the far side of the Jordan, the man to whom you bore witness, is baptizing now, and everyone is going to him. John replied, A man can lay claim only to what is given him from heaven. You yourselves can bear me out. I said, I myself am not the Christ. I am the one who has been sent in front of him. The bride is only for the bridegroom, and yet the bridegroom's friend, who stands there and listens, is glad when he hears the bridegroom's voice. This same joy I feel, and now it is complete. He must grow greater, I must grow smaller. The Gospel of the Lord. the work that we do in the church is God's work. We offer ourselves wholeheartedly without the expectation of reward. We may be praised for what we have done, but everything is to be done for the honor and glory of God. We know from scripture that John the Baptist, that his role was to prepare the way for Jesus. He knew within himself he was a voice, he was an instrument, he was an instrument of God sent to prepare the people for the coming of their salvation in Jesus Christ. And John will be humble enough to say he was not the Christ, that he was not even fit to undo uh, the sandal straps of Jesus. He was also, um, he would also tell us and tell the people he was not the light, but only the one speaking for the light. He was doing everything for Jesus. He was not Jesus, of course, himself. So John begins his ministry of preaching and baptizing, calling people to repent of their sins. And John, he had his followers, he had his following. Jesus also had his disciples, and Jesus was also baptizing. And they were baptizing in not too different, uh, not different places, not too far from each other. There was no competition, even as um, John's disciple asked about it. There was no competition between Jesus and John. There could never be, as a matter of fact. And people were going to Jesus for baptism. So John had to be clear to his disciples and reminded them that his mission, his mission was to prepare for Jesus. That was his only mission, to prepare for Jesus through the preaching, through the baptism, through calling people to repentance. So when Jesus began his ministry, of course, we know that he began his ministry after he was baptized, which we'll celebrate um, um, over this weekend, John would then take the back seat. He would then, as he would say, um, decrease. Jesus would increase and he would decrease. And as John would say, um, you know, it's time for him now. As Jesus has come on the scene, it's time for him to, as he continues his work, but to recognize that there is one who is greater amongst us, amongst them. And so John continues, but Jesus also takes his place. John is humble. He's very humble. He's a great lesson for anyone who is engaged in the work, apostolic work within the church. I think too often we think of it as our work, that this is my mission, this is my work. And people get very, 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 um, very fussy when, um, when other people want to get involved or they see other people in competition. And sometimes, and that happens in church, where people are sometimes involved in ministry forever, 
and they're not prepared to let it go because it's their ministry. And then sometimes, of course, you have other people who do not want to get involved, and, and sometimes people do have to, 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 to do something for perhaps maybe longer than they should, and yet it's not their ministry, it's God's ministry, it's God's work that, that, that we're all doing, all of us. And so we can allow our jealousies to get in the way. The, we can allow um, our ego, I always talk about that, ego, our ego gets in the way. It's all about me, it's about I. But if we're acting in accordance um, with God's will, then our focus will really be on trying to fulfill what he has called us to. And so jealousy and, other, and all the other things that get in the way um, shouldn't because, we're, because, because we're, we're focused on doing God's will. And no matter what is happening around us, that, that's what we're focused on. So as we're called to ministry, we also have to be earnest in prayer. That's what we hear in our first reading as well, to be, prayer, to be mindful that the work will, be, will succeed when we are praying, when we're asking God for the grace, for the strength to do the work that he has called us to. And remember that God will never call us to a particular ministry without also um, giving us the tools that we need for that ministry. We always, always have to remember, always have to remember that God's work is bigger than anyone or any one person. But many people are needed to help in doing God's work, in spreading the good news about Jesus Christ, in preaching and teaching and calling everyone, not just to repentance, all of us, in our search for, for God. But again, always bearing in mind, always bearing in mind that it is to God's honor and glory. Yes, we may be rewarded by all the wonderful things that people may say about us. We may get a, a nice plaque at the end of it saying, you know, he did well or she did well on you know, good service within the church. All that really um, shouldn't matter. The most important thing in the work that we do is to recognize who we're doing this work for. It's for God by the way that we give service to the people around us. So we have to let John's uh, example be our example. His example of humility, recognizing there's no, we can't, there's no way, of course, we can compete against God. Um, and, 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 and so we, are, we humble ourselves to do this work that God has called us to. It's not my work. It's not our work. It's God's work. And we're doing it for him, to his honor and glory now and forever. Amen. So we stand as we present to God the prayers of our hearts. As we pray for Francis, our Pope, and Clyde Martin, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the region, we also pray especially for the Bishop-elect of Diocese of Bridgetown, and pray for the people there and and that all the bishops and with the Pope will continue to shepherd us into God's kingdom. Lord hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those called to be in service of God, doing God's work as priests, religious sisters and brothers, as consecrated as husbands and wives and those who have given who give themselves over to God's service within his church that they will always remember that we will always remember that this work that we're doing is not our work but God's work to the honor and glory of God the Lord hears Lord, gracious, we pray for our nation and pray for the world continue as we continue to be gripped by this pandemic for all those who have died for all those who are sick at this time and uh, under the care of nurses and doctors and we pray Lord that through the use of vaccines and and through the wisdom and courage you give to us and give to them that we will be able to overcome this pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Praying for 
Miss Addison Park. Praying for all those who have access also to pray for them. And pray for, remember those who have lost their jobs also because of the pandemic. Those who are unable to truly look after themselves and their families. Pray for our children as they return to school next week. But even as they have to, some of them study online and we know the difficulties of that. We pray, Lord, for their safety. But we pray, Lord, that they will be open to what they learn not just what they learn in school, but also as what they learn from their parents, especially and what they learn from within the church as each of us is called to be a good citizen within our nation. Lord, hear us. For the sick of our parish and, and all the parishes and all the sick of wherever those who are sick in our hospitals, our nursing homes, those the housebound, we ask the Lord to be with them and to bring the sick healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray for those who are preparing for baptism at Easter. Pray that all of us will re also remember our baptismal um, vocation, which is to be a light for the nation to share and spread the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. And now we ask Mary, our mother, to pray for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the end of our Lord. Eternal Father, listen once again to these prayers that we have made in faith and grant what we've asked through Jesus Christ, our Lord. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy 
O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly the right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Clyde Martin, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, I may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, Jesus Christ.
Christ who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but look on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. May your people, O oh Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever greater, deepen the trust for things eternal, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let's enjoy the rest of our day. Thank you. This is a special appeal to the general public from the Diocese of St. George's in Grenada. In light of this unusual and unforeseen circumstances that we are currently facing and to meet ongoing social and financial obligations, the Diocese is seeking your kind assistance by way of monetary contributions. If you can, and are able to assist. Donations can be made in the name of the Roman Catholic Bishop in Grenada at the following commercial banks. First Caribbean International Bank, account number 1071603. Republic Bank Grenada Limited, account number 9201957. And Grenada Cooperative Bank, account number 11300596. In addition, checks and contributions can be addressed to 
the Roman Catholic Bishop in Grenada and delivered to the Catholic Chancery, Church Street, St. George's. Contributions can be made via wire transfers or electronic fund transfers. For further information, please contact us at 1473-459-4612 or 1473-440-5254 or our email gncc at catholicgnd.org. Thank you for your contribution and may God continue to graciously bless us all.